Hey guys, I'm back again. Round two. All right, now I'm on December 17th. <laughs> Apparently, uh, I don't know what the hell. Oh, uh, looks like IG. All right, let's check this uh, garbage out. Favorite thing. Oops, my hair is like kind of falling out of this. My favorite part of this job is when you get people cornered into a situation where you know you're hitting a nerve in your reporting when you are seeking the truth on a story. Is it me or does she say so when people weird. It's like have me. not, I mean, not a lot. I would say the majority of people that have followed me know that I am really just on, um, Drunk. my goal is to find out the truth and my goal is to, um, spread the truth about a destructive sex pedophile uh, rapist cult that is forcing women into a life of slavery and servitude Holy and human fuck. trafficking of their children into marriages uh, raping of their wives beating of their children this is never gonna stop is um, it denying rights human rights of their wives and of their kids and so um, when I started covering them, I don't even know, like three, four years ago, the goal always was to seek the truth and to stop the spread of religious extremism and to stop the mainstream commercialization of domestic terrorism. Some people don't like to think of religious extremists as domestic terrorists, but that's exactly what they are. Their goal is to terrorize you by stripping your rights, taking away your freedoms, and they will protect themselves with their guns if they need to. All of these people are very, very armed. Um, very, very armed. I mean, they love, 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 love their guns. Honestly, at this point, she's and making this up as she goes along. I love guarantee it. To protect rapists. Uh, they love to threaten, they love to sue, they love to intimidate, and what they really, 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 crazy. really... crazy. Crazy. How much more can you talk about this goddamn topic? Honestly. I wonder if people start telling her, like, honestly, get better content and stop talking about it. Like enough already. My favorite part of this job is when you get people cornered into a situation. And what they really, 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 and what, and what they really, 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 I'm not going to lose my channel. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Someone just said, what's your backup plan? My, my backup plan is I'm not going to lose my channel. <laughs> Trust me. Literally, I'm quite positive you are. I've never, my reporting doesn't fall under what's called, it doesn't. What do you call it? It doesn't, I don't, the only way that you can have your channel banned on YouTube is if you don't follow their uh, partner program. Which like, is TOS and you don't follow it and, and you I have screwed up. Strikes. I don't ever get in trouble. I follow everything. You will now. I am so careful in my coverage. I'm always like so professional when I do my coverage. So I'm professional. Not get in trouble because I just, I don't, you're not going to see me bullying people. You're not going to see me calling people names. You're not going to see me like on YouTube. I keep things wow. so even. Community guidelines. No, it's no. Community guidelines are one thing, but you have partner program requirements when you're on the on YouTube. So it's called TOS. If you don't terms of service program, and you're breaking so them, in order to be on YouTube and get monetized, you have to follow their guidelines as a partner. And if you don't follow their partner program guidelines, you can get in trouble. So the, that includes community guidelines and that includes copyright, but that. Also, there's other things like terms of use and TOS and that kind of stuff. So, like, that's, you have to, like, follow all of that. Terms of service is separate from community guidelines. So there's a TOS, which are, like, your agreements when you become a creator. So you have to follow the terms of service of the platform. Then you have to follow the community guidelines. Then you have to follow uh, copyright. You're joking. 
Why have a channel? So, why turn comments off? Why have? Why even bother going live? The cults are all. So okay, I'm gonna turn off comments. Wow, I just can't with her. <laughs> it's like every single IG live she does, she turns the comments off. What the hell is the point of people even watching? Seriously. Uh, destroy you or try. Anytime you're covering a story and people start threatening you and they start threatening to uh, destroy you or try to censor you, you know you're getting close to the truth. Um, this happens a lot. Uh, they either try to threaten you by destroying you or they, they file like a baseless lawsuit. People have filed so many baseless lawsuits against me. I don't lose my lawsuits. Um, they generally just get thrown out because they're always garbage. Um, because people don't like the truth. And I'm not afraid of lawsuits. I'm not afraid of yeah, you should be. Uh, someone threatening to take down my channel. Because honestly, when you have the truth on your side, you can't. There's nothing that can stop that from getting out. And this, the irony here is that the, the people that are saying, like, we're, we're going to take down your channel or whatever like that, these are the same people that also are huge First Amendment uh, rights advocates. They're the same ones that say, like, we need to fight cancel culture. So they'll be like, well, we need to fight cancel culture. But I have no idea what you're talking about. Other people's rights. See, I've never cared about, like, when it came to politics, I would say don't vote for Jim Bob Duggar. Uh, when I say, like, did I think the Duggars should have been on TV? No, I didn't. Have I ever tried to get their platforms off of, of any of these? Like, have I ever tried to get any of their YouTube pages down or their Facebook you or got, their Instagram? You absolutely no. because as much had as everyone like on say, your channel contact the sponsors for the Duggars show. And they still have a Are right to express those because we do live in a country where freedom of speech matters. And so... Um, there's a difference between freedom of speech and like spreading misinformation and dangerous speech. So there's also a difference between lying and telling the truth. And you, my friend, lie a lot. Trying to bully anyone is trying to spread the truth. And listen, I'm not the only one that's done this. This is the weird thing is like, there's a lot of people that have covered this group. There's a ton and I'm not the only one, but you're the only one that gets it wrong because I'm not like a tabloid because I'm allowing space for a victim to come into the community and share their story or, uh, I'm hoping that her lives get more interesting. You might have, have I ever tried to get their platforms off of uh, any of these, like, have I ever tried to get any of their YouTube pages down or their Facebook or their Instagram? No. Because as much as I don't like what they say, they still have a right to have those thoughts and feelings. And they still have a right to express those because we do live in a country where freedom of speech matters. And so um, there's a difference between freedom of speech and like spreading misinformation and dangerous speech. So when I do my coverage, it's not about- I can't get over this. Like she needs to, to really listen to herself. Is trying to spread the truth. And listen, <sighs> I'm not the only one that's done this. This is the weird thing is like, there's a lot of people that have covered this group. There's a ton and I'm not the only one, but I have a platform that's different because I'm not like a tabloid because I'm allowing the space for a victim to come into the community and share their story or uh, I'm allowing the victims to talk to me and let me know their experiences. You're not gonna get that same feel when you're like reading an article about the sun. I read a lot of the tabloids and I always think of it this way. When you're reading like say like In Touch or Us Weekly or People and they use like a source, in my professional in my professional experience, especially with like People Magazine and Us, and Us Weekly, just with the reality stars that I know, I know for a fact that a lot of them use, uh, the sources are actually the people in the stories that don't want to go on the record. Um, I can think factually behind the scenes of like a story I covered years ago that involves some people on Teen Mom. And I actually saw Us Weekly 
uh, reach out to one of the people and say, like, do you have a quote on this? And then I literally watched Us Weekly take the quote, use it out of context to make a completely different story out of the quote. And the quote that they used had absolutely nothing to do with the story that they created. It's little things like that that they do. And, and people That's what you do. do too. I also noticed that, you know, like, E! News doesn't even know which sister is which when they're doing the stories. Like, they're like, Janet got arrested and they have a picture of Jill on there. It's like, really? You don't even know the sisters? Come on. Anyway. I don't believe it. <laughs> she must really think she's the best in the whole wide world. Nobody can compete. It's KJ's world and we're just living in the goddamn thing. Okay. Uh, anyways. Like, like that's, that's a basic thing. thing. Um, and oh, you guys. I'm just going to tell you guys. If you're Reddit. If you're on Reddit. Um, the Sun Magazine is gonna try to take your memes down. I'm not kidding. If you used pictures that they took at trial, they might send you a copyright infringement. Like, they're crazy right now. I don't know what it is. Uh, someone created a meme of Derek and Jill, like, and the explosion behind them. And I, got, they're like, you need to remove this. And I'm like, uh, that's a meme that was created on Reddit. We gonna talk to Reddit about that. So apparently, like, you can't even use an image that, and then transform it into something else. Anyways, um, no, I'm not afraid of my channel going down. Okay, I'm going to turn back on comments. No time. So I'm going to, I'm just going to see if, if some of these people are going to come into the, into my chat right now and see if they can, I'm going to see, because they said they're going to flood my chat with negative comments. Oh so I, I want them You're to do that right now. You're asking for trouble. Please, please cut, flood my comments with negative chat chat like negative comments please what a smug looking b with an edge and she's drinking guys someone wrote negative comments here's a negative comment Negative comment. She's not going to be smiling when she doesn't have a platform. I'm going to be loving it. <laughs> she doesn't deserve one. McNair is basically five fundy families. Probably. How do they human traffic? Under the U.S. Constitution, there's a 13... Oh, the God, 13th amendment she's just repeating that, herself and repeating herself she just went over this in the last video she did come up with better content please this is can be ridiculous or indentured the 13th amendment states that nobody can be enslaved or indentured into involuntary service. Someone says this is fun. And this cult forces women and children into effectively being involuntary servants and slaves of their patriarchs. So when someone's forced into slavery or involuntary servitude of someone else, that's trafficking. And so you're forcing and trafficking someone to work for you. And then they look at someone saying, will the truth come out about the other male siblings? Meaning because what she's claimed they're doing with the pedo stuff. Oh my God. I am not going to cover Scientology because Lisa Remini does a better job than I do. You don't need someone on Scientology right now. You have someone like Leah and Mike who have massive platforms that are doing great work. Scientology doesn't need me. There's no one like Leah and Mike covering the IBLP. Leah is already doing a phenomenal job. Like why would someone need to come in that's better than Leah? Are you brow tattooed? Huh. 
I love Leah. Yeah, right. You don't love anybody. I would love to jump on the live and share some of the information I sent you earlier. I'm not scared. Okay. Oh, no. I think we were talking. Yes, you were from the homeschooling world. Let's go. Okay, so Raylan, you guys grew up in the daughter cult. My name's actually Rachel. That's just a nickname my sister oh. gave me when I was a kid. <laughs> okay, so Rachel grew up in the daughter cult, and she let actually, her explain um, it, please. Was homeschooled, and she um, grew up with the Holtz kids and the Fedowski kids and the Duggars and probably the Millsaps. I don't really remember a ton of it because I really was little before my parents turned. They never said we were like fun year cult. They just can't admit to themselves that that was a theme. But we very quickly turned Southern Baptist like right after I was born. There's pictures of me like six months old, like being brought into the Southern Baptist church. So most of my information I have is from my siblings. However, um, in also side note, McNair is like non-existent. I drive to Fayetteville every day for school and I've lived in Northwest Arkansas my whole life and have never heard of it. <laughs> It's like not existed. It's uh, like unexpected. It's like probably two people. Yeah, fake people are having. Uh, basically, yeah. basically, it's the Fedoskis. <laughs> yeah, but so we grew up in a homeschool group, um, and all kinds of crazy people. Some of the stuff you were saying on your live earlier, I was like, oh, PTSD from homeschool moms yelling at me. Um, but. Um, so in this group, we have, if you guys ask me like really specific questions about, yes, that is a cat's tail. Um, if you ask me really specific questions about like the Duggars, I can't really answer that, but I can tell you about like the people they were around. Um, and so we, there's this group and they host graduations. It's like the largest home in Northwest face. Arkansas. I graduated out of it. Everybody, my second oldest sister. She's just itching to talk. Me, which is seven kids all graduated out of this. Um, and they have like all kinds of community service stuff we did. I really hope KJ doesn't screw this girl over. Alright, we all have KJ. Backyards because they got free manual labor. They called it. Is it sort of like a co-op? Kind of, but like not really. Uh, but Teresa Fedoski was one of the main people who ran this, and she is very close with Michelle. If any of you follow um, Bowman, her son, who has 180 from his family um, earlier today on TikTok, he was exposing a lot of information. Um, but they, she hosted this event, and she hosted like all kinds of formals where people danced, and uh, we would all get together. And there were more chaperones than were needed, but there were basically so many chaperones that all the parents could sit around while we were having fun and like talk about who they wanted to like set us up with. However, <laughs> the Duggars were never there, which is weird because they're best friends with like the Holtz. Kira Holt graduated in the same graduating class my brother did. Um, I sent uh, Katie pictures earlier of like their graduation and then standing next to each other. Um, by the time I graduated, so many people have left, left this group. My brother only graduated two years before me. And I think there were 50, almost 60 kids in his group. In mine, there were 16. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people have left. I'll show you guys Bowman's TikTok in a second. Like, don't get... T he Basically, Bowman Stowski is uh, Teresa's son. And he said that Josh gave them a bunch of computers that they were not using anymore. So Josh, just to give you guys an understanding, Josh Duggar, they would buy a bunch of computers at auction. And then Josh would like fix and like build up the computers. I've talked to tons of people. I don't even want you to know how many. And a lot of the sources I talk to are literally like dads that were friends with Jim Bob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't that. like, like they hate Jim Bob now. Uh, so, because Jim Bob's like super mean to people once you defy him. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um, but anyways, yeah, so Josh would build up the computers, and then when they didn't need them anymore, he apparently gave them to Fedowski's, and apparently, and I don't know if I even believe the story, because this is too good to be true. I wish she would let her talk. Woman's trolling. Like, for, yeah. you've heard enough, KJ, from you. I'd like to hear the other girls speak. It's 
which was cleaning up all the different people's backyards because they got free manual labor if they called it. Men said that when he was 10 years old, he went into the deleted files of computers and found thumbnails of photos. I don't know why it keeps going low and then sometimes it's really loud. It's the don't understand this. Found thumbnails of photographs of porn. It's almost like he was watching the trial. I think either that or he's trying to like save his butt a little bit and be like, it was just deleted files. There wasn't actually anything on there, you know, um, and not admit that there was actually information. It's like he was watching the trial because yeah. that's they found in the trial was right. thumbnails. Like, yeah, you were 12 or 10 in a Fundy cult and you found thumbnails of porn. Right. I, I think you probably actually found actual files of porn and you're just trying to minimize exactly. it. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so as far as like the homeschooling goes, like we use very similar uh, curriculums. I think, and I might be making this up, but I think very back, I started watching their show when I was younger because my family had spent so much time with them and I was like, I don't really understand what this is. And when their show came out, I started to watch it. Um, and I think and I remember the Duggars, the, are not the Duggars in real life. <laughs> um, I remember them, like possibly using a Becca, which was a homeschool program. We used Rod and staff was a homeschool program. That was like math questions of like, if Andrew walked up to Jesus and gathered up five fish and then Simon took one, like, <laughs> I actually know. Okay. So I know one of the families that they were with and they told me the program that they used, uh -huh. but they told me even with the program that they used, it wasn't very good. And most um, homeschool programs are not, and I'm not, like, downing every homeschool family. However, I grew up homeschooled, so, like, my experience, and a lot, I just, I know so many people that are homeschooled who, they get into college and just struggle. I mean, I'm one of seven kids, and only one of my sisters finished out a degree. And yes. it was in fine arts. Someone, I asked one of the friends, former friends, and I said, do you think any of them have GEDs? And they said that they believe that, like, the older kids have GEDs. So I think Josh, Jana, John, Jill, Jessa, and Ginger do, but they, and then Joseph, but they don't know if anyone below them have GEDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But basically the program that they moved on to a little bit later in the show is called Switch On Schoolhouse. Um, everyone's saying they're homeschooled and they agree. <laughs> um, and that program, my brother and I use. Katie didn't know that. She's got to say something with that mouth. As a reference, Arkansas has the worst educational rules around homeschooling. Arkansas, uh, just to give you guys a reference, Arkansas has the worst educational She can't rules stand that this girl knows more than her. Like, let her talk, for so God's sake. The least requirements and let the least amount of restrictions. <laughs> Which only changed back in 2012 because there used to be basically benchmark testing for kids at third grade through 12. But back in, it was like 2012 or 2014, they didn't require it anymore. And so it's really popular that people, what they call it is they unschool their mm -hmm. kids and just let them like learn from life. <laughs> That's I did. Yeah. Um, but there's this program called Switch On Schoolhouse. And my mom put my brother and I on it when I was um, in seventh grade and a little bit about my family history. My mom got cancer when I was 12 and she's had a seizure disorder most of her life. So we've really been... Instead of being caretakers for younger siblings, we were caretakers for our parents. Um, and so especially 7th and 8th grade, and then my dad got cancer when I was 16. So my uh, junior and senior year, my and my brother's education was just lacking. Everybody else had moved out by that point. But my brother figured out my mom's password because it's the same password of all her bank accounts and everything else. Um, and figured out how to go in and grade our own work. And so <laughs> I was telling Katie earlier. If the Duggars are as bad as Josh about using the same passwords, then their kids are probably getting in that program and just, like, cheating through it. Right. Because it's really easy to do, and especially when you don't feel like you're being taught well. Like, you don't want to do the work. Well, this is what I was told by someone that knows them, is that <laughs> Jim Bob never told his daughters that they were going to do anything in life. Oh, yeah, no. So they were not... So I take like, it this chick actually knows they, the Duggars is what um, I'm hearing. I think I'm hearing. They didn't. He basically told them like you're not, you're educated. valuable. You're not valuable. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your education doesn't matter because right. you're you're not just doing anything. In that case, KJ just needs right. to let her speak. So they didn't put any sort of um, importance into it for the girls. Right. Well, and it's because your job is to get pregnant and have babies, and really that like living in the Bible Belt anywhere just in this area, 
that's really common. Like I have people, I'm just turned 20 and I have people asking me all the time, when are you getting married? Why are you dating anyone? And I'm like, it's not your business. It's not your business. She's got a whack load of hair. I need some. I feel like I'm bawling with my old ass. I'm happy living my life with my cat. Um, but Wait, what was that? A kitty? It's just so common. What's that kitty cat? I'm happy living my life with my cat. Oh, you barely showed it. <laughs> it's just so common. Like, that is the culture around here. And two people, I mean, my sister just got married in January. However, she has been with um, her now husband for, like, nine years. And people ask them all the time. Like, I just want to say this preface is, and I hate to, like, interrupt you here. Because I'm looking at the comments. Yeah. This is educational neglect. I just yes, have to put Absolutely. It is educational neglect for a woman. Do you guys not feel that KJ is trying to come off as like a know it all mean while this girl knows more than KJ ever will? Only I don't like that. Just be like, you I feel like she's belittling her. That's equivalent to what they do in Afghanistan, you guys. I have to put this out there. That's equivalent to what they do in Afghanistan in the Taliban. Right. Well, and that's the thing is like, my sister, very far removed from the church, we talk about it all the time how much it traumatized us. And, we go to family events and our extended relatives, the last time we went, our sister-in-law is pregnant, um, but the last time we went, he, my uncle walked up to her and went, so when are you new? And she was like, that's rude. I just have endometriosis. <laughs> You're annoying. Um, but yeah, it's totally educational neglect. And it, it puts these women in positions where it's very difficult for them to take care of their families. Take Anna, for example, she's probably in the same boat. She probably has about an eighth grade education. Not that she can't work or can't get a job. I was telling you earlier, there's so many jobs in this area all the time. Um, however, to get a job would defy Jim, Bob, and Michelle. And then who does she have to watch the kids? You know, right. so like that when they pile on this many kids to you, that's all your independence. That's where your independence goes because everyone's told you for your whole life, you can't, you can't do it. Yeah. Well, they don't, they're not told to be independent. They're like, right. they, they never wanted their kids to be independent uh, at all. Uh, and just to give everyone context, so I was, this was one of the first messages I sent Katie earlier today. The, most of the money in Arkansas goes in and out of the Northwest corner, which is where the Duggars and myself live. I'm not going to name what town. Okay, so she does know them. Out of the Northwest corner, so that's where most sure. of the money, some of it is, I'm happy living my life with my cat. Um, the money. Some of it is in Little Rock. Some, but so not much. Weird how the reason so is, is because we have Tyson factories here. We have Tyson Home Office. We have J.B. Hunt and Walmart. Walmart was founded here. Our neighborhood markets look like have gazebos outside of them. Like this area is very nice and it's rapidly growing because of Walmart. Um, and so. Ben being under Jim Bob's thumb is like. Oh, yeah, I'm going live New Year's Eve, guys. <laughs> if you want to hang out with me, really I'm not sure what time, but I will. Well, I it will be nighttime. Was I I'm thinking around eight. I don't know. I don't. I Eastern kind of time. Watching after Jess got married, really. Um, I wasn't that involved after that. Oh, I'll tell you. A, I'll tell you a secret. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but so one of my sources told me this. I'm not in Tony Town. I'm not in Tony Town. I'm not going to tell y'all where I live. Sorry. My uh, sources told me that Ben is, his dad is like, owns his own business and he does like, I think he does glass or repair like when you get into a car accident or something. Mm -hmm. And so his dad is like a really hard worker, but like Ben is like super lazy, they said. Like he really wants to just be like that academic guy that tells people how to like think about the Bible, except yeah. that he doesn't actually have the intelligence to do that. That's so sad. That's so sad. Um... And then he just doesn't, like, they felt like Ben sought, it off, sought out Jessa because she was famous. And, I mean, he literally said that he saw her on TV and wanted oh, to. Oh, looks like that's her. not true. Well, I mean, Anna, too. Anna was, like, a super fan of the Duggars, you yeah. know? And that's kind of, like, their culture. Um, this is going to make me sound like a psychopath, but I think it's so funny. The fact that, like, I, I still kind of have connections to their family, but I've never really been around them. I'm like, man, I'm James's age. I could really just walk in and shock their family if I decided to. <laughs> I was like, how fun would that be? <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, mm, don't really have anything to press today. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just 
all of it, even what you were talking about earlier with how the kids are treated as though they're worth nothing. Like their daughters are dispensable. This lady that I grew up around and I still see a lot because we go to a couple of similar places. Grew up around and I still see a lot because we go to a couple of similar places that I should probably stop going to, but um, my hair is a mess. Um, she, and I remember her vividly telling us. KJ's probably jealous of her hair. She turned her kids because we're like just playing around or whatever. And she goes, our house is not a democracy. It is a dictatorship. <laughs> That's what she told her kids. Um, and I witnessed them do corporal punishment to their kids. It was very common. Like they're, people around we were around and uh for everyone watching like a lot of the people i was around claimed to be southern baptist like that's really their best cover because the iblp is very similar to southern baptist like it's really similar well, um so i think cross church which is one that the mm-hmm, were yep. doing yeah, yeah, yeah it's not southern baptist, it's southern baptist. Mm-hmm. yeah um there's churches like due to every corner here <laughs> um but they Oh, there was one lady that used to like try and spank me. Like, who was trying to put words in her mouth? Yeah. And it was like, I remember going to my mom and being like, why are you like letting me around these people? And eventually, when I became 12, we moved to like a bit more of a progressive church. Um, But forever, my mom was on staff at that church. And so I was just around these people all the time. And it was like we had eyes on us all the time. And to that, point like I do have a little bit of empathy for Gina and her post that she made saying like because of my last name I'm under my KJ herself. didn't like that. That's absolutely true and to an extent she should use her caution but also like it sucks to have your life on Microsoft because your brother's a horrible human being and because your parents made you a child actor. You know like she's just stuck in this limbo where she has no options, you know. Oh she's a babe. Yeah. It has no personality. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's really, really sad. Yeah. Okay. I just wanna, so, was there corporal punishment in your house? Holy, get off of it. She tried to mention that corporal punishment a few minutes ago, and that girl wasn't having it. So she brings it up again. See, that's what I mean. It's like that's all she wants to talk about. It's just all the negative and the horrible things. Empathy for Gina and her post that she made saying, like, because of my last name, I'm under a microscope. Oh, yeah, check Which is that absolutely line. true, oh and to an extent, she should use more caution. But also, like, it sucks to have your life on microscope because your brother's a horrible human being and because your parents made you a child actor. You know, like, she's just stuck in this limbo where she has no options, you know? Well, she's a beast. Yeah. Then has no personality. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Really, really sad. Yeah. Can you? I'm. I just wanna. So, was there corporal punishment in your house growing up? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. It was not. So it was a PVC pipe. Um. That's usually what my parents used. Um. They're little flexible ones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, my girl would like put them in his little thing, right? Yeah. And my he- mom didn't really do that. Uh, me being the youngest, I only received it to my memory once. I know my parents didn't like it trained. I know that's something they did not do. Um, because I watched all my siblings get in trouble a lot. Um, and so I only really received it once. And I was a pretty good kid. Like, I'm really not a rule breaker. Um, so I only got grounded once from my phone or anything like that. Um, so stupid. Um, but my my dad was much more of a yeller. Like, he would just yell at us all the time. And that was kind of his thing. My mom would, like, take away privileges much more than she would, like resort to corporal punishment and it really ended by the time i was like six like they they threw it out they were done with it uh so the pvc pipes that they use it's actually different than like the actual like hard pipes they're these like little like i mean they're they're really flexible yeah so they're like they look like pvc so they're like that white color they're really like they're yeah um, and then you just like it, they almost like they have like give, and then you can. But like, you can hear the wind behind them if it goes yeah. fast enough. <laughs> you yeah. can hear it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I had friends all the time, like wooden spoons, parents' hands, like all the things, and it was kind of this like culture of like 
the parents would brag to each other about what they would use. Um, and again, the same lady who I was talking about earlier, who said her house was a dictatorship. She was talking to me the other day about how my mom, um, gave her. Sorry, that vibrating is my phone. Oh, not, my not messages. because they were disobeying, but because they didn't get along. <laughs> I was like, her kids running laps around her house in the winter when they wouldn't get along. Not because they were disobeying, but because they didn't get along. <laughs> I was like, my, I don't ever remember doing that. I think my mom, my mom was really creative with punishment. She did look mad. Party one time, and so she made them um, pull all the wallpaper off my brother's bedroom <laughs> when they were teenagers. Because uh, she wanted the job done, and so she just asked him to do it. Um, and mm -hmm. I didn't grow up by the LP. I got spanked. Yeah. And it wasn't like. Oh, that thumb. I, she's I chewed know, the other one now. I'm super angry when they did that's it. That's disgusting. You know, that I, know, I know my brother, my oldest that's brother, was like. That's the one thing. Can we just talk about this? <laughs> yeah, go for it. That's a lot of Southern mentality, true. And in this world says, well, I'm not mad when I do it. So yeah. it's fine. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. Right. Well, and some of it, too, is like, if you're not mad and you're hitting your kids, that sends even more of a confusing message to them. Right. Well, and some of it, too, would be like, I'm disappointed that you did, you disobeyed, and so this is, like, the consequence of your disobedience. It's not like, I'm angry at you because you're a bad child. Like, that's how I was raised. I don't think that's the way that I was raised. But, um... So, in my house, what we do, just to give you an idea that's different, I was like... <laughs> And I just, this is like, I feel like I need to counterbalance violence. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. I just want to show you like an example of like how we discipline. We, well, we don't discipline. We actually do working towards rewards. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to teach my son because he has autism. I knew she was going to bring um, that up. How to. Meanwhile, it's like, been proven that he doesn't. Much more difficult than a normal, like a, a neurotypical child. Sorry, uh, Liana, I had other parents use flip flops on me who were not my parents. Oh, how oh, dare you try yeah. interrupt KJ? Too. Look at her face. <laughs> so today he took away um, her my pity son party was having a tough time with his uh schooling we work every single day towards little things like okay today you need to wash your hands you need to listen to your uh teachers you mm -hmm. need to go to classes you need to participate he doesn't like, go to school though like and then like he hasn't been in school in a few things, years then he gets a reward if he doesn't meet all of those things then he doesn't get that reward mm. like it's not a punishment it's like a uh, he's learning to. Not getting what he wants at the end if he doesn't do it. So he's almost learning like I it's without work towards him, but indirectly, he's not getting what he wants at the end if he doesn't do it. So he's almost learning like I it's without hurting them. Right. And I started I started naming kids when I was 13. I started um, like as a job, I got paid to do it. I didn't just watch other people's kids. Um, and I never, never once it crossed my mind. Like there were so many other things. And I mean, I did do time out, like you're overwhelmed. You need to like step away from this situation that's making you upset. So you're going to come sit over here for a couple minutes until you can like calm yourself down. Um, but yeah. How is that punishment working out for all the kids? Wow. Outside of my family? No, I mean, just in general, like how fucked up are these kids? Right. Exactly. And that's the thing, too, is, like, how many of them turn out like Josh, you know? they. I mean, I cannot tell you how many people were, like, in our youth groups and stuff who are now in prison. Tell me about it. A lot of them. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Um, and it's just all similar crimes to that. None of it is, like, petty theft or that petty theft, you know what I meant to say, or, like, anything like that. It's always extensive and usually has gone on for a really long time before they finally get caught or before somebody feels validated enough to report you know like i said there's a lot of uh sex offenders around the duggars there's a lot of them in religion period because anywhere you have a power dynamic where one person is in power usually they're going to abuse it that's just the fact it's the worst in churches where women do not have any leadership mm. Um, or any voice because it's rampant in the Catholic church and we have leadership there. Yeah. I will say in the churches I've gone to women do 
have leadership, but most of the time it's over like women's groups or and or kids. Um, the, the second church we went to that I went to into some of my adulthood, um, the pastor's wife preached maybe once a year, but other than that, no other women preached from the pulpit. It was always like, you have to go to a women's group if you want to like hear a woman talk about her faith. Like KJ's getting bored now because she's not the star of the show. So that's, um, so that's, um, who has a nervous tick? I don't know why people are. Me? <laughs> uh, probably. Okay, so, no, so here's the thing. No. Someone just said, no offense to Goss, but I'm not trying to defend him. He was once a victim of this cult. Yes. 1,000%. Mm -hmm. Nobody born to be a predator. Although, because the kids don't have a lot, there's so many children, like, parents can't give their kids the attention that they need. Right. Like, adequate emotional um, support. It just... Kids were... Um, Neglected. Neglected. Yeah. And I absolutely think that's true, but also we live in a country where adults have responsibilities and have to take responsibility for their actions. Right. And he had multiple people tell him this is wrong. And he continued with those actions. So, yes, he's a victim of his circumstance, but also he's an adult who has responsibilities. Who has seven children? Yeah, I think his dad never made him accept responsibility. He raped a woman in 2015. Mm -hmm. And his. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many other women do you think he's raped? How many other kids has he probably raped? It's right. Are you kidding me? Well, like when you let somebody, this is why we have a justice system in America. And this is why we have jails and prisons, which are not great places to be. You know what I mean? Like they're, it's not fun, but if we. Don't punish people for their actions. This is all KJ wants to hear. Do you see this? Years, asking about corporal yes. punishment. Now she's asking about RAPE. Like, right. she's you guys disgusting. Are, um, giving her shit about her laughter. Can you please stop? Um, people that grow up in trauma react to discussions around difficult topics very differently. And for some, laughter is a coping mechanism. Not only that, she grew up in a world where emotions were not allowed. And so it's really shitty of you guys to like judge her based on. Hey, her they're your subs. Back. They learn from the best, honey. It's just like seriously. Notice because they didn't go after KJ, she didn't block and delete. To her, this is why these people don't speak out. Y'all, I don't, also don't care. You can make fun of my lap. But I grew up with seven older siblings. Do you think you can hurt my feelings? Good luck. <laughs> Well, they're just so petty. It's just yeah. so... It's probably the people from McNair. <laughs> I laugh sometimes when I'm nervous or I'm just, like, awkward. I'm just an awkward person. Um, yeah, I am too. And also, like, my parents did a pretty decent job of socializing us. But again, the people we were socialized around were not great <laughs> for the most part. Um, and so, I mean, I still... I mean, you're like kept out of like normal situations. You're not allowed to socialize. Or she quit telling her what she went through in her life because like she to doesn't be know. With extremist beliefs. Um, it is difficult. I still um, have like a certain amount of faith, but I also um, I have a lot of trouble with the church and the institute of the church because of, and again, like this isn't really IBLP. This is like my experience with churches I've been to because I don't really remember growing up in IBLP. Um, but Parts growing up in extremism because your parents were in the IBLP. And even when they come out, I find that a lot of people are still extremists. Yeah. Um, it is, it's difficult to like realize what's normal and what's not. Like my sister and I were talking the other night and we were like, it's just, so horrible that like Josh's case like we're desensitized to it you know like we were able to talk about it and we're like whatever yeah 
And I said, okay, Jay can talk about it too. She keeps bringing it yeah, up. I mean, it happens all the time. And I didn't really like learn about it until, um, I'm trying to think the first case I learned about. Uh, and two, something you guys should know is like the foster and adoptive community in Arkansas, um, a lot of families adopt kids. I've known multiple that become victims of circumstance there as well. professional sitting there talking to a serious topic kj's um, giving her the death stare while kids, drinking my dad <laughs> with one sister who was 11 years older than he was and he didn't want us to be lonely um but i i mean they both definitely care for each other like when my mom is sick my dad will, like go get her food and things he's not the best cook <laughs> and constantly um, staring at herself in the phone oh my god all those things. and some of it i think too is like marriage right like you take care of each other and help each other um but they definitely take on like traditional roles for sure. So your family's certainly not as strict as some. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, my parents got us vaccinated when we were kids. <laughs> so, and as I would say, encouraged us to get our vaccinations and um, they let me get on birth control when I was younger because I have really painful periods and like have a really hard time functioning without it. Um, Sorry, I was ready to comment. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, I also wore a dress to one of these forms and was told that I was being a distraction to everyone there because of the dress I wore. And my mom didn't see anything wrong with it. What were you wearing? I was wearing a four length dress to the ground. It was strapless and was mostly covering my boobs. Like my boobs were not hanging out, but because it was strapless. No, a lot of that is not how generations did things. My brother and I talked about it a lot. Like the things he was allowed to get away with compared to what I was allowed to get away with as a kid are very different. <laughs> uh, like he was, and some of it too, I think is like, was our parents protecting us? Because again, we were more vulnerable than boys would be. Um, but it would be, um, if you think a strapless dress, it's a modern thing. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's modern. It, feel bad for what this girl went through. I don't know the totality of it, but um, I'm sure it was yes, nice. Yes, I to wear pants. My parents never made Someone just told me I was inappropriate. Um, yes, I was allowed to wear pants. My parents never made it a rule that we just had to wear skirts. Um, I mean, okay, so in this world, like the Duggars are extreme, but there's people that are even more extreme. Yeah, I never encountered them. I only encountered people that were like less extreme than the Duggars. I really like I really don't have affiliations with Duggars besides I was in a homeschool group with their best friends, you know. Uh, personally. But And the they were in the homeschool group with they weren't really even friends with anymore. At that point, yeah, by the time I was in it. Because the Fultz and the Duggars haven't been friends since two thousand and six. But Teresa was in their thing uh, on Counting On when Abby and Lauren were pregnant. And she was in it, I think, too, when Josh and Anna, I think she delivered Mackenzie. Yes. I'm not sure, but I think she was, I can hear her voice in that clip. Um, yeah. And the Arkansas midwives are not. <laughs> yeah. You know, my parents are so progressive because they had all of us in a hospital. Yeah. Um, if I wasn't born in the hospital, I would have died. Cause, so if my mom had tried to have a home birth with me, I would not have made it. She, okay, so there's different levels of this cult. There is and there isn't. Like, she's out of the cult. Like, they weren't ever really in it. I don't know how long they went to their home church. I was talking to my brother about it 
today to try and figure it out. And he was like, I don't know. I would have been in Father. I don't remember. Which home church? I don't know. Whichever one they hosted at their big house for a while. They had like Colts and I think like some Millsaps and mm-hmm. Andrex and I don't even know. Uh, the Wilsons molestation stuff. It would have been way before that. Um, or it could have been that same church, but I mean, it would have been at least 99 or 2000. There's, do you know the kid named Justin that did I pray you put this journal away? God, now she's going to get into that. So he says he was in that church, Justin, that did I pray you put this journal away? There goes Toad. So he He's drinking too. Justin, yeah. Um, but his Our dad doesn't have many requirements for any profession. <laughs> Someone was just talking about midwives. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, Justin. Um, I guess his dad wanted the daughters to be famous. Hmm. That's what I was told today. And I was told that, like, there was a lot of sexual abuse in the daughter's um, home churches. Uh, yeah, it's weird. How common is it? Very common. I know. And, like, people who weren't even, uh, like, that I've met in my adult life that never seen before, never gone to church with, that don't, like, were never involved in any kind of IBOP. Like, it's all the time. So, would it shock you if you knew that there's other Duggar brothers doing that kind of stuff too? Like For I fuck's said, my sake. sister and I were like desensitized by the stuff by the time like all the stuff with Josh came out. When I tell people that like what Josh did is like normal in this world, like people don't understand that. Oh yeah, like it's it's weird. And two, it's not even just like um, IBOP or in churches and they like there were all the time um, in schools around here and one of our neighbors at one point like horrific story all kinds of stuff Um, I so many of my friends that did go to public schools in this area like talked about stuff happening all the time in Grand Ore there's children there's going to be a higher uh, amount right like where children are present it's just is um, but yeah it was all the time Exactly. Someone said I have to hold back. I do. I know a lot more, you guys, but I can't say anything right now. Um, also, for everyone wondering, like, the reason I do not care is because my family is not connected to these people at all. We all just kind of distanced ourselves. Like, we do not like talking to these people. Look at KJ's face. She looks pissed. <laughs> just came on to give perspective of, like, their homeschooling curriculum and how like they weren't allowed to come to the graduations and the formals and things that everybody else wanted. Yeah, I mean, I think her point was that there is a community of people in this world that do um, interact with each other. And there are homeschool families that have more interaction with one another. The mm-hmm. Duggars, what her point is, is that they did not allow that. Right. Like they did not allow their kids to have well, and I saw, too, somewhere on Bobby Holt's Facebook today, I was looking at it, and she said, like, somebody was commending her, telling her, like, they were sorry for everything that happened. And she was like, yeah, and they, like, allowed our daughters to spend the night right after it happened and didn't tell us. With the she, like, Yeah, she, like, wrote that on Facebook. Oh, it's Bobby Holt? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It was, like, in the comments of one of her posts. Yep. They told her um, that Josh was clean as a whistle. <laughs> I can tell y'all too, um, Fayetteville, I go to school a couple days a week, and the days of the week that I was there for the trial, like, I didn't go near where the trial was, but, like, it was ghost town. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. This is going to time out in one minute, so this yeah. lie. This is... Why? So I don't want to, like, cut you off. It's yeah. just saying a minute left. Well, I'm glad you had me on. It's fine. Yeah. You too. I might come back on in a few minutes. I had someone just send me some messages. So I had some sources I need to go check on. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much.
much for joining me. Yeah. Thank you for your information. Yeah, I know it's not like super helpful and easy, but I also know the people that are like actually involved in it can't talk about it, you know? No, yeah. We need people to actually speak and the people that are in it here. So thank you for putting space there. Yeah. All right, you guys. Bye. Now, did she go back on? So we're on the 17th. Aww. Aww, the baby. Oh, you guys must remember this infamous video. <laughs> Is he not asleep? Is he asleep? Come on. I have spent 10 hours in that room. And he's drinking. Like, why wouldn't you just get off the live? As he's yelling at him. Holy shit. See, I would be getting right the hell off that. This is not a mother. you guys it's been a rough day for everyone everyone's tired he's not falling asleep everything will be fine this is why she got cps called on her and honestly <clears throat> she deserved it he has insomnia yes yeah okay but when he gets really emotional he has a hard time falling asleep and he's very emotional. That's why she's looking up to see if Todd's listening. She's so I have to go because I need to take over for my husband. <laughs> Disgusting. All right, you guys. I think that's it for me for tonight. <sighs> I just want to see when the next one is. Oh, for fuck. What's the date? Okay, apparently now I'm on the 18th. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, you guys have a good night. I am done with KJ. I cannot tolerate any more. <laughs> uh, all right, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And please sub if you haven't already. Subscribe, like, comment. I love the comments. All right, you guys have a good night, and I will be back tomorrow. <laughs>